Hey there guys, welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. This is Shaitan here from Design Pilot. I am back again today with another video and in this video we are going to be taking a look at the brand new features in Adobe XD version 9 June 2018 update. Now I know that I am a bit late and uh, there are a couple of videos that are already out showcasing the features but I just wanted to go show you different ways of using the features and also there is a particular feature that was released but nobody has shown it in their videos I don't even think the XD team has uh, done it so I'll be showcasing that feature at the end of the video so uh, without any further ado let's get started XD and before we get started if you guys are new to Adobe XD or new to my channel or trying to figure out what kind of what video this is then I highly recommend you check out my top 20 features of Adobe XD video where I cover extremely in detail about what Adobe XD is what it's used for what are the entire features that's there and also it's gonna help you decide whether Adobe XD is a product or a tool that uh, you you want to use or is gonna help you in your design process so make sure to check out the video link in the description okay so the first feature that is one of the most highly requested features is fixed elements. So let me just show you directly how that works. All right, so if I come over here, uh, by the way, this is the wires uh, UI kit that was prepared by the XD team. If you want it, you can go to open get UI kits and choose uh, wireframes uh, and um, or more UI kits. It's somewhere there. I'll put a link in the description anyway if you guys want, want it. Uh, so, you know, I can save you the trouble. Anyways, I'm gonna take a look at this screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it and I'm going to ex just extend this artboard like so. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the scrolling and set that to vertical. And then as you can see, it says the viewport height is 964, which is the exact height of my artboard. And so when I click, it's not going to allow me to scroll because the preview is the same size as the viewport. So I'm going to go ahead and just reduce this. As you can see, we can see that dotted line that comes and I'm just going to move it uh, right below uh, the bottom tab bar all right so or I can even zoom in and I can move this manually if I want to and now when I press uh, play to prototype it let's uh, scroll this down all right and now when I scroll it you can see that this bar is moving along with uh, the entire elements on the page, but I want this to be fixed at the bottom just how it works on every single app in the world So I'm gonna go and select this and I'm gonna choose a fixed position. Boom. We are done All I have to do is now preview it and if I scroll up and down as you can see this is now a fixed position All right guys, so coming on to the next feature is overlays now overlay is a feature that allows you to overlay a particular element or a different artboard onto your existing artboard without actually moving or transitioning into a different artboard. You are on the same artboard and an overlay comes. So let me just show you, you would have definitely used this in all your apps, uh, but uh, let me just show you quickly. All right, so here I'm in the payment and the checkout section of the uh, Wireframes UI kit. And uh, what I'm gonna do is, uh, make a small process over here. So when the user is on the screen and he clicks on continue, which is basically he has to purchase the product, he's gonna get two of his uh, cards or let's just say one card uh, and he can choose from the different cards. And once he clicks on one of the cards, uh, it's gonna take him out to the checkout uh, of the final uh, payment screen right here. So let's see how this is done. So I'm gonna go and into the prototype section. You can use the shortcut control and tab to switch between the design and the prototype or the command and the tab key uh, on Mac, that is. All right, so I'm gonna go, just click on this continue and I'm gonna go create uh, a prototype like so. Now we get two options here. We have transition and overlay. Let me just uh, scroll this up. All right, so we have transition and overlay. I'm gonna choose overlay because when I say transition, it's gonna transition to the next artboard. But when I choose overlay, I'm gonna stay on the same artboard. All right, and once we go and choose overlay, we get uh, this kind of a green uh, background box, uh, bounding box. And um, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go and set the overlay. So basically this option is telling me which artboard is gonna be the overlay. And that's gonna be this one, seven. 
all right that's going to be that and the, what's what transition i want i'm going to choose this to slide up so it's going to come from the bottom and go to the top now there are a couple of things that i want to show you in this uh to make sure to understand how this works now let's see how this works in prototype okay when i just go and click on play and choose continue you see this is this this is what happens all right and if i just click anywhere else it is just going to go back and as you can see, uh, this is not ideally how it would uh, look visually because this looks pretty bad. So let's just clean this up and make it look really good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go delete, uh, let's go back to the design mode. I'm gonna delete this section and I'm gonna go select the artboard and change the color of this to this background color. And I'm gonna go delete this. And uh, this is in a repeat grid. So I'm gonna choose ungroup grid and I'm gonna delete this. And yes, and now I'm gonna select these two and move this up pretty much over there. Actually, I'm gonna shrink this down a bit, all right? And then move this to the center, okay? And then I'm gonna select the artboard and shrink the size of the artboard down. So how Adobe XD works with overlays is, uh, when you take an overlay, if I quickly show you right here, it's gonna take whatever is there in the artboard. It's gonna take the size of the artboard to define the entire overlay. It's not gonna take the elements, it's gonna take the size of the artboard. And now, because I reduced the size of the artboard, I can move this up and down, and I can position it wherever I want to. Now, as you can see, it's gonna give me a faded and a small, simple representation of how it's gonna look, and I'm gonna keep it over here for now, and let's go play this out, all right? So, if I click on uh, continue, you see it's gonna pop up like that brilliant now since none of these overlays are linked anywhere i click it's gonna go back it's gonna take me back to my original artboard now as you can see it kind of goes over the continue button and there is no feature in the xd as of now to make sure that this continue stays on top of everything i'm sure that people are going to be working on that all right uh that's good but the workaround is for that is we can change the transition from uh probably we can say uh slide a left uh, maybe you can try that out and let's see how that works yeah so it kind of slides and it goes back that's that's a pretty cool thing now uh even more fun so let's say i have this now when i when the user is going to pick up this card we can move it to this artboard and we can set this to transition or we can even overlay this one on that so basically we're going to have an overlay on an overlay which is pretty cool again so let's just set this to transition. My target is the eight checkout page and uh, this the transition is uh, going to be, let's uh, keep it slide up, all right? And uh, now let's play this and see how this works. Uh, play. So I'm going to click on continue and that's going to give me this. Now, if I click on this, since this is not linked, it's going to take me back to my original. But if I click on this, it's going to take me to this payment page and that is it. So that's how overlays work in Adobe XT. It's a pretty cool feature uh, that people have been requesting for a very long time and I'm glad that they bought it in. Okay, so coming on to our next feature is mathematical calculations. So I'm sure that every software you use, you can add mathematical functions to the properties and uh, they are going to apply. So if let's go ahead and just create a simple rectangle like so, we have 460. So let's say I add, uh, multiply this by two. So it's going to go 920, which is pretty cool. And it also can take in complex calculations. For example, if I use brackets, so let's say 920 minus 10 uh, pl plus uh, 20 in brackets. So 920 minus 10 plus 20 in brackets, which should be 920 minus 30. And if I just press enter, it's going to consider the brackets as well and give me the mathematical calculations, which is 890. All right, now coming on to our third last feature. Uh, if I go to my share option over here and choose publish prototype, uh, I have two options. I can either create a public link uh, which is usually what was existing till now and we also knew have this new option called as a new private link and what i can do is i can choose to create a private link so let's go ahead and click on create private link okay so now that the link has been created i can name the title i can allow comments all that this these are all the usual ones and if i go on invite i can just add in a name or an email id so i'm going to type in my email id right over here and i can choose a i can add a message if i want i can just go ahead and choose invite and if i come to my inbox here you can see i've got the message saying chasen cave is invited to view the wires mobile prototype i can view the prototype now i can either use my adobe id or use my facebook id or my gmail id to log in and view and share the prototype 
And if the person wants to create an Adobe ID, he can do it completely for free. All right, so coming on to the second last feature is the support for Typekit on mobile. I think this is extremely for Windows users uh, because every time you have to view the prototype on your mobile device, you need to sync it to Creative Cloud. You cannot connect a USB and play around with the prototype in real time. That's something that the XD team is working on, but it's available for Mac. So what it so what this basically means is that if you have if you don't have a particular font installed on your phone, but if the font is synced in Typekit with your account, then the XD documents are going to be loaded, will automatically be will automatically find and sync any Typekit fonts in the document, even though you don't have the font file installed on your phone. So that's a neat integration that was required and it is now here. Now coming on to our last feature. Oh, this is Photoshop. What am I doing in Photoshop? This is an amazing and an awesome, cool feature. So on the screen, what I have here is a background. Let me just set the color of this background to white. All right, so I have a background and I have a simple rectangle and then I have a picture. All right, so this is how the picture is. And if I right click and choose create clipping mask, it's going to go and do this. I'm sure you guys already know this and I'm going to go ahead and save it. I've already saved it on my desktop. And for those of you who didn't know, you can open Photoshop and sketch files in Adobe XD. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to just going to go and go and choose open recent. And I'm going to choose the untitled one dot PSD, as you can see over here. And this is what we have. But what's so cool about this is if I select this object and double click on it, all right, I can now manually move this picture, which was not available in the previous versions. Once I cropped it, it's going to be cropped forever and I can't change the size or the position of the scale. And now I can just scale this if I want to focus on Iron Man over here, for example. Let's focus on Iron Man over here and just click away. As you can see, it is now cropped and oh, let's actually do this properly. Uh, okay, there we go. So now Iron Man is in the center, which is amazing. Now moving away from the Photoshop integration, if I go ahead and let's double click on this to get that and delete the image. And uh, we just have a simple rectangular fill over here. Let's go to Google and grab an image and I have this simple landscape image that I have. I can just select that, drag that, go into Adobe XD, and I can drag that right on that. Now in the older versions, I would not be able to crop this, but in this version, if I double click on it, I can then now scale it and focus on the waterfall over here and just click away and that's it. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. And I'm super excited about the new features that are coming into Adobe XD. If you guys have any questions or requests, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. If you have any requests on what features are to be included in Adobe XD, you can go to adobexd.userwise.com, link in the description for that as well. And I will definitely see you guys in my next videos. So then take care and bye-bye.